Joining me now is Lieutenant Colonel in Reserves, Doron Avital. Doron, thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Doron Nasrallah is assassinated in a historic turning point event, but is it indeed a turning point in your opinion? What might the implications be? I'm sure it's a turning point. This is a figure that uh, almost can be, think, we can think about him as a head of state, he's a head of a terror organization, but his positioning in the landscape of the last 30 years in the Middle East is much more than that. He's the strongest proxy of Iran in the region, a power, a powerhouse in Lebanon. So he's not, his figure is much more, it's bigger than even the role he was playing uh, technically or formally, and his demise is the beginning of a new chapter. We have to think, what's this new chapter? What, what are the implications? Iran has to calibrate its move. We have to think seriously. Uh, it's a big a turning point for sure. Now, is there a Hezbollah without Hassan Nasrallah, in your opinion? Will they be able to function without Nasrallah? I mean, we are seeing dozens of rockets still penetrating Israel. Well, I had to predict the question whether you think short term or long term. Short term, clearly there are forces in the ground, there are launchers, there are weapon ricochets that are still there and they are still shooting, but not in the, to the extent or to the precision or to the magnitude that we were considering beforehand. So we have to evaluate what happened even to our estimation. So the weekend, the whole echelon of command is gone. And so the short term, they, they are very weak and we have to think what what we have to take from it, what we have to take in terms of the sudden tip of Lebanon, should we, uh, should we enter, shouldn't we, how do we bring our city there? In the long term, who tells? When Mosul, we, the former commander, was taken in 92, Hezbollah was a very small organization and not that uh, of magnitude, and with Nasarala it became a powerhouse. So we have to be careful, and we have to see also Lebanon. How would Lebanon react and try to form itself in the... In, the, in this phase after uh, Hezbollah, and how would Iran play in uh, Lebanon? But Iran would uh, insist on taking a stronghold in Lebanon again. This is a turning point. We have to be very alert to any implications forward. Now, from what you know or can assume, did Israel have the ability to take out Nasrallah all along and was waiting for the right moment? And if so, why have they waited so long? No, I, I, my feeling there were some opportunities. Of course, an opportunity is a window of opportunity and has to do with the uh, probability of success because you can't even uh, secure it, even if you know that it's in a certain location, for sure if it's in the command center, which is deep, deep uh, underground. So, and also there are other considerations. I think we are not rushing to hit leaders in this magnitude. I want to remind the audience that in 82, for example, there was this famous thing with the Yasser Arafat, the head of the PLO, was under the aims of our soldiers. We didn't decide back then that we should take him on. To take on a figure in this magnitude is a, a decision that you don't take lightly. And then there was a moment and the consequences after the Gaza war really forced us to really rethink. And I think this was the move, this was the moment, and it was successful. Now, Iran has vowed retaliation for Nasrallah's death. What kind of response might we expect from Iran or from its proxies around, across the region? First of all, we have to take them seriously, even the, that we can estimate that they're not as strong as we will consider them to be. So something like the 13th of April, I think we are well prepared, but this is an option. Uh, trying to work from Lebanon for sure, and for sure, we have to be very careful in terms of Israeli targets outside of uh, Israel. I'm sure applying terror to senior Israeli figures, to institutions abroad, we have to be very careful. We have to take them in their word and see what's up. Lieutenant Colonel in Reserve, Dorona Vital, thank you very much.